Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we're gonna learn about for loop and the for each loop. So first thing first, let's go ahead and create the new class, Java class. And I'll say lesson five for this. And I'll also go ahead and do the main class here. So in this class, we'll learn about the for loop. Why you use loop? In Java, if you have something that you have to do repeatedly, here loops come to the play. You know, once you give this statement inside the loop conditions, then it's gonna run by itself, which is easier for the programmers to understand and to write the code. Here, I'll give you a simple example for the for loop for now. So let's with the for loop now and syntax. How are we gonna write the for loop? So the first thing we have to go through the syntax. Syntax for the for loop is we have to use the for keyword, then parenthesis. So inside here, inside this parenthesis, we have three things good inside. The first thing is initialization, and the second thing is conditions, and the third one is updation, which means we have to update whatever we initialize. Let's go ahead and just see the quick example. I'll show you an example to print the even number from one to twenty. So we have for keyword. And inside the for keyword, we have to give initialization. Let's do initialization first. Integer number equals to zero semicolon. Then we have for the condition number is smaller than twenty. That's what we say is from one to twenty semicolon. And the updation. So updation is we have to update the initialization number that we have. So number plus plus is that the program will run till it's less than 20 and inside the bracket we have to give the statement to run if the given condition is matched or true let's say out concatenate with the number and also we have to do one more thing here we have to increase the number by one again because as you remember here we have already raised the number by one and also we have to raise the number by one more to get the even number. So is zero or even number? Yes, we can count it as a zero as an even number. Then after we'll get two. Then after we're supposed to get four. So that's how we're supposed to get the 20. So don't go up to 20, it should go below 20. That's what the sign says here, the operator we gave. Let's run the program and see. As you can see here, it started from zero. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. If you want to give the, we can change the condition and make it till 20. So if you can say smaller and equals to 20, you will see 20 in here. So you say equals to 20. So run the program and you can get the even number till 20. Here you can see when you change the condition, you will get the result here. So now we have the even number up to 20. That's what we just received. That's how we can write the for loop. Whatever you have to loop will go inside the block of the for condition. Easy and simple. I'll go ahead and show you the example for for each loop, which is a little bit different in syntax. It will make your work easier. But most of the time, the for each loop will work. Get the value from the array. Syntax of the for each loop is a little bit different. So let me show you the syntax. Initialization is still required. Okay, we already have the number from this. So let's say it's second number. So initialization is still required then as i say for each loop will be really easy to work with arrays in there so you have multiple numbers or multiple values inside the array go ahead and create an array we're going to create the array of marks of the student classroom array of integer math mark so it's a marks of the math subject equals to inside here we will give the number that the student received in a math subject 23 45 50 okay we have an array of math mark the student received in their math class so the initialization we have second number use the for each loop get the max number which they receive in the math i'll give the max from the array i'll say for that i'll give max now for each you can see for each in here so i'll go ahead and do for each so before this colon we need to give we have to initialize it here as the numbers and here whatever you want to pass to the number so we want to pass math marks to the number whatever is a math mark will get passed to the numbers now so whatever the math math marks is number has the same value so inside this block we have to write the code that need run and so let's say our max is equals to math marks and the index number i so we initialize i let's initialize i as well integer i equals to zero so index is i that means on the array the index will go start from zero zero one two three four five six seven eight so they have up to nine number but the index will start from 
zero, so index will go up to eight. Now the first time the index will be zero because we initialize i at zero. We give i value zero, so the index will be zero. You can see here integer i equals to zero. During the first time, the max, the value of the max will be twenty three. That's what we say is the index zero. Zero will be twenty three. And here we'll give the condition if condition that we just learned in the previous lesson. Here will be numbers numbers greater than max if number is greater than max max equals to numbers and we'll raise the value of i because we have to pass different value every time to check with the if condition so after the condition is if condition is over the max will have the maximum value from the array and then for each loop will end then we have to print the maximum value and concatenate with max so far looking at this program our max value is 99 here so we're supposed to receive the value of 99 saying the maximum number is 99 that they received in the math class so let's go ahead and run the program as my first statement is still active and so I still can see I get 99 but just to see the get the fine look I'll give I'll say the new line here and run the program again here as you can see maximum marks in math class is 99 you can still see the mm, the previous code run because we have the same main method so let's make it a little bit changes let's say we have 100 the first student received 100 then run the code again does it changes yes so this is how easier it is for each loop don't forget the syntax of for each loop and the for loop if you have to go through the array then the for each loop will make your life really easy simple i hope you guys understand about the for each and for loop if not please comment below and i'll try to elaborate more on the for each and for loop to make you guys understand thank you so much and stay tuned for more videos